We are so very, very close to the end. We are on unit five, which is the last unit, and the last chapter. This is called combining functions. In this textbook, we have four sections in chapter eight. So it goes 8.1 all the way to 8.4. Um, now the thing is, a lot of times at the end of the semester, we just don't have time to do all of the material. So that's very unfortunate. Well, I mean, unfortunate for me, not so unfortunate for my class. Uh, they're probably happy about it. Um, but the 8.4 section we didn't actually teach. So I can post up videos on 8.1 to 3 and maybe one day if I ever teach 8.4 I will try to post up a video. All right, so uh, combining functions is actually quite easy. You can combine different functions in a variety of ways and 8.1 is probably the easiest where you're just adding or subtracting the functions. So let me show you how that looks algebraically. If you have two functions, and we'll just color code them for easiness, um, you have a quadratic, which is the red, the f at x, and then a linear, which is the green, and that's g at x. So what the question is asking is create two new functions, h at x and m at x, by adding or subtracting the two functions at the top. So it's just as easy as that. I mean, algebraically, you just add your f at x and your g at x together. Okay, so I got those from this part and this part. Take off the brackets, put things together, uh, simplify, and then that's our answer. So just be careful that when you take off the brackets, you'll have two symbols beside each other. You're going to combine them to make a negative. Okay, and this is not the order we like, so make sure that it's in the right order of descending exponent. That's it. That's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, let's do the next one. M at x, you're just going to subtract them, put your f at x and your g at x down. Remember that when you have a minus in front of a bracket, it's going to change everything in the bracket after it. Okay, so that's going to become a plus, be very careful. And then again, put everything in the right order. So algebraically, it is quite simple to put these guys together, but obviously uh, we're going to give you harder and harder um, functions to put together. You can also do this graphically, which is what I'm going to show you in a little bit. But first, let me just apply this to like real life so you kind, you kind of understand where this comes from. If you're talking about, say, sounds, sounds are usually represented by sine functions. So for example, if you're talking about the frequency of the sound, that would be like the period of the function. The amplitude of the function kind of dictates the loudness of the sound. So some sounds are combinations of many sine functions. For example, like a G chord played on a six string acoustic guitar. Um, so when you're trying to create the sound, you have several different sine functions, your um, blue, red, and green. And what you can do is you can combine them through addition. This is the algebraic um, combination. And this is if I had taken all three of those graphs and combined them. Together, these make a sound, which is that sound of that G chord, okay? So I think you're starting to understand it. Now, like I said, in 8.1, we're going to be talking about the sum and differences of functions. But in 8.2, we're going to start combining functions through multiplication and division. And then 8.3, you're going to talk about something completely different, which is composition. So we'll talk about that later. All right, let's return to sum and difference. In the warm-up, you basically created two new functions by adding and subtracting your original functions. So this is how I had written it before, f at x plus g at x, but I want to show you that there's another way that we usually write it in grade 12, and that is f plus g at x, okay, and these guys need brackets around them. So I'm going to be writing it in this fashion, um, just so that you know. Okay, let's just talk briefly about graphically um, solving these things before I show you. Okay, so um, if I did want to combine functions graphically, the idea is you're going to take all your x values and y values from one function, take all your x and y values from another function, and whatever x values both functions have in common, you're going to add or subtract the y values. That'll create your list of new coordinates for your new function. So let me show you how that works. In terms of graphically, we have two functions, your f and your g at x. Okay, so your f at x is in blue, your g at x is in red. And I've even kind of tagged these coordinates down. 
probably going to need a little bit more space. And all right, so here are the coordinates. I made sure to choose um, points on each of the graphs that were lined up, as in have the same x value. So that's very important. Your um, two functions have to have the same x values in order to do this. Okay, so I just wrote them out. Here's the negative 1, negative 4 right there for your blue function. Your 3 and 4 is that other point right here. Uh, the negative 1 and 2 is on your g function, and then um, 3 and 6 is right down here. Okay, so I just wrote out the coordinates uh, for each of the functions separately. And again, note that it is very important that your domain is the same. So in order to combine them, now they've told us, okay, I want this new function h at x. I want you to combine them. You're going to have to add them this time. Okay, so I want f at x plus g at x. Algebraically, we already know how to do that. You would just add your quadratic and your linear, and you would get something like this. So that's fine. You could also then, after you've created this function, you can graph it because you know what this looks like. You could always plug in numbers, whatever. But what you could do is you could always skip the fact that you, I mean, put together both the functions algebraically and you can go right ahead to graphing. So you create like a new table for your h at x. You have the same domain, okay, the same domain as these guys, but then you just use a super um, position principle where you just add your y values together. Okay, so here's negative 4 in blue plus your 2 and that gives you negative 2, so your new coordinate is negative 1, negative 2. So if I add these two points together, I'm going to get this point right here. All right, let's try that again. Take your next y values, 4 and 6, add them together, you get 10. So that's going to give you the next coordinate, which is 3, 10. So I added those guys together, and I get this new coordinate. That's it, and then you just join all your dots. I'm going to go back to algebraically because, like I had said, some of these um, functions are actually going to get a little bit more difficult. So this one is where you actually have um, a quadratic and a trig function. You can still add them together. If I want to figure out f plus g at x, I'm just going to go, here's f plus g, and then I'm going to put them together by taking off the brackets. So since none of these guys are like terms, I'm just going to put them like this, and algebraically, that's all I have. That's the answer. If I wanted g minus f at x, start with your g, minus your f, and then take off the brackets carefully, because remember this guy is going to change the symbol inside there, the negative, right? And you're going to have a function like this. I think in this case, since you have like quadratics and you have like um, trig in there, the order of the terms don't really matter too much. I'm pretty sure your teacher won't really care about that. You can actually do this stuff graphically too, and it gets a lot more tricky. So I'll show that to you in the next 8.1 video. So here's a couple of just characteristics. Um, I, I mean, some of them are really important like this one. Again, your domain has to overlap for both functions for you to actually um, create your new coordinates for your new graph. So let's explain that. Let's just pretend that you have some sort of a number line and your f at x exists on this part, like let's say the domain for the f at x is here, the g at x's domain is maybe from negative 1 to 1. Your new function, if you added f at x and g at x, or you subtracted f at x and g at x, would only exist within their overlapped domain. So if the graph for the red is within this section of, um, you know, your x and y axes, and your g at x is only within this section of your x and y axes, how can you add them together if red does not exist here? How can you add or subtract them if blue does not exist here? You can only combine them where they both exist, which is where they overlap. All right? So that's the domain. Your range is going to depend on each of the graph's ranges. So um, if red or blue has some sort of restriction, you're going to see some sort of resist restrictions in your combined graph. Uh, this is just like small stuff. Like It's just saying if you have a max or a min in any of your original functions, you'll probably have a max or min in your um, combined function. Again, this is just extra stuff if you want to know it or not. Um, if you put two even functions, so remember this means even, right? And this means odd. 
So if you put two even functions together, you're going to get your combined function will be an even function. If you have two odd functions, you're going to produce an odd function. If you have one of each, both of your functions put together will not be even or odd. And if you have two functions that are neither, you can have an odd, even, or neither function that is the combination of both. Okay, so I don't know if you have to memorize something like that. It's just something that, you know, you can be aware of, um, but these are just extra things. Okay, so let's go through some actually examples in the next 8.1 video.